May I now request the Honourable Minister to deliver the centenary celebration lecture. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much, Palkiwala Foundation, for inviting me one more time to be with you all to speak. Whilst I look forward to sharing my thoughts with the, this August audience in Chennai, because of the way in which the center has grown and uh, the association, very strong association with uh, Palkipala himself, it's not an easy task. And uh, when I did ask Anand if he would want a written paper to be presented, he made my job even more difficult by saying no. So with a sense of hesitation, despite the things one can always speak, being where I am placed now, and despite the uh, limitation, because in another 10 days the budget itself will have to be presented, I seem to be in not so enviable position. So, with a little uh, expectation and of certain level of indulgence from the audience, I'll try to balance my act, not so much to say so much of what is happening in the preparation of the budget, at the same time not to also be too cagey about what we want to do. So if you'd permit me, I'd broadly get to talking about the topic about which I suppose each one of us can have an idea of how to reach the $5 trillion economy. And every idea is a worthy idea. But yet, most ideas, like the way I think one of the speakers said, he'd written to the then Chief Minister and then the Prime Minister, as to what happened to that idea of forming an alliance for ourselves and so on. Every idea gets subsumed into some idea within the four walls of the government, and then it flows out. So I'm sure each one of us have some thought about how we can reach the five trillion, but yet there are, to say the least, difficulties and also the challenges and the, and the channels which the government sets for itself to flow out with its activities. But largely, I think I'll recall one of the lines which the Honorable Prime Minister has said, and which I think holds good for not just India, for, but for any democracy, is he used three words in Hindi, which clearly states where he believes the government should be, and why is it important that he believes, and therefore it's important. It's important because he's the first among equals, and the elected prime minister who campaigned on a manifesto, who stated things in his manifesto. And therefore, if I pick on one very critical line of the prime minister, which he probably sets out quite often, and I think that will capture as to the spirit with which the government would want to work towards a $5 trillion economy. And you, I'm sure you've heard it before. Sarkar ka abhav nahi hona chahiye. Prabhav na hona chahiye. Sorry, prabhav hona chahiye. Or dabhav nahi hona chahiye. Matlab, abhav and dabhav. Both of which are not desirable. Abhav is inadequacy or lack of adequate presence or shortfall. You don't need a shortfall. Where a government should be present, it should be present. 
where it is expected to function, it should function. So there should not be a above. Dabav is the other which you don't want from the government. What is dabav? Pressure. The government's impact, too much of an impact from the government. The stress caused by the government. So you don't want the stress of the government. You don't want a complete absence of the government. What should be there? That's the prabhav. Prabhav is broadly an influence, broadly facilitation, broadly the, the philosophy with which it is mandated to govern. It's got the mandate through the election. The mandate is spelt out in so many different ways in its manifesto. So to that extent, government should be there. So if what is this route towards $5 trillion? The route is this. We'll have to be there to facilitate. We'll have to be there to make it easy. We have to be there where you find that there is no policy at all, there is no direction. You lay the policy before. And you don't do it by sitting in one room. You consult people, take source of information, every letter, every mail, or every cloud-sourced information, or every such interaction, it's taken in. But above is, in many counts, you want the government to be faster. You're not adequately in the race with us. You have to be with us, get ahead of certain curve, and give us a policy. So that is, you know, government's presence should be there. You're not really catching up with the scene. You have to catch up. So if I were to broadly characterize, therefore, this route through which you're going to achieve $5 trillion, it is this. No excessive dabav, no excessive abhav, but certainly prabhav. So if that is broadly laid out, how do you think we have done in the last few years, in the last term? And what are the things which we want to do now? One thing is very clear when it comes to, although, in many of the things, before I say that sentence, many of the things, even as you implement it, it's not actually up to the expectation of your own measure. For instance, Prime Minister Modi often says, look, I don't believe in incremental changes. We want good transformational change in everything that we do because at the stage at which India is today, you can't afford to have little marginal increments. You have to move rapidly. Your youth, whose number is to our advantage, want rapid change. They want an India which can catch up with everyone's aspiration. And therefore he says, look, let's plan in such a way that you're not going to have little incremental changes in every sector. It should be so transformative that our young feel that there is hope. But in that, you might still say the last five uh, years you could have done a lot more things, but you never did. You still were incremental. That can be a critical uh, analysis of the government, and I'm fully willing to buy that. I'm fully willing to buy that because post-2014, the kind of cleaning up that a government had to do was unbelievable. And we undertook that exercise without a grudge, without a worry, without saying, oh my God, is this the extent to which we have to do the cleaning? We had to do it. it it's part of the game. And therefore, I remember very clearly between 14, 15, and 16, there were immense lot of questions saying, why is the Land Reforms Act not passed? You're incapable of doing it. Your majority is not sufficient. Your Rajya Sabha position. But it is a matter of fact that that law, if it required further amendments or it had to be recast, it was a reality that you had to take states on board. Land, after all, is ultimately with the states. And you are planning to do something because something which was passed in 2013 really did not meet the expectations of many of the states. It made the whole business of acquiring land beyond any government's state or centers capability because it had tied itself in knots. 
So you wanted to do something in that, you didn't do in the first few years, and then even after that you sat over it, is the allegation or is the criticism against us, I'm fully willing to buy that. And why is that? With the states having their own thoughts about how this land acquisition will impact this act, will impact any land acquisition effort of any state, you really couldn't have done rapidly something. But yet, that very same government, our government, Modi's government, could effectively handle the GST. Even where you required all the states to be on board, you had to convince the states about how one tax for one nation would really make a difference. So if you thought you were not able to make a difference in the Land Acquisition Act, you could make it in the GST. So if Modi believed in the transformational change and not a marginal incremental change, it worked out in GST where you sat with the states, and I take with due respects the name of my predecessor who really sat with all the states, Sri Arun Jaitley, and who was able to bring that change over and pass with the GST law. All right, it might have issues. I'll come to that in a minute. So that incremental change and not just incremental but transformational change, I've given you these two examples to say if this government wants and if it realizes that it is something with which popular opinion and also states are together, you're able to make a difference. So that is one of the routes in which we will continue on the reforms. Similar is the question of IBC. We can see today what difference it is making because the approach that the IBC takes, Insolvency Bankruptcy Court takes, is not to shut the business. Bankruptcy, yes, is part of the name itself, but it doesn't every time end up treating a company as close to its bankrupt, shut it down, finish. But no, the, uh, the approach IBC takes is to have some kind of a resolution where, all right, people who have really exploited the, uh, the, the company in question don't come back through back door, but yet reasonable resolution, better buyer, better management, and therefore keep the institution going, keep the company going, keep the, uh, that company live and kicking rather than shut and cause more distress. So, and in the IBC, one thing which I want to carry forward from Modi 1.0 to Modi 2.0. As soon as this government was formed in 2019, just go back to thinking of what the courts had done with some of the cases which were before them in the name of IBC. When the government realized, and because the inputs which were coming from stakeholders was, the IBC is itself probably getting interpreted in such a way that the spirit of the act was being really questioned. We had to quickly, and in response to the industry, bring in amendment even in the budget session, which was the first session after the government was elected to power. And thereby bring in greater clarity that the gray areas were cleared. So that no further such interpretation caused a delay in the process of implementing IBC because the IBC was with the timeline. Company resolutions couldn't wait for decades. We had to get that through in time. So the, the, the point that I'm trying to make in is this road to five trillion is not just an abstraction. It's not just this is how we want India to be, but in every micro level too, we are coming in response to the stakeholders. We are trying to give facilitation so that courts and the resolution don't suffer. And if there are interested genuine buyers, we should facilitate so that the company gets back to being on its toes. So if I were to sort of very quickly uh, bring before you the kind of cleansing which has happened, the kind of addressing genuinely the issue of black money. There can be 10, 10 15, 20, Criticism of, oh, what did demonetization do? Matter of fact, there could not have been a greater measure to suck that money out of the system, which was lying dormant. I, I'm giving you a very 
uh, light-hearted and uh, not so germane to the conversation example. Any bank, any central bank, when it looks at a currency note, has a circulation or the lifespan of that note. This many times it would probably come into circulation. This many rounds of circulation over the currency's own life, meaning the worth of the paper, the, you know, the, the texture of the currency note, all of them given. You return the currency to the bank saying this can't anymore be exchanged. It's dead for a currency paper. So you, you know the cycle. And there was absolutely clear indication that the higher denomination notes did not have that lifespan. They had longer and longer lifespans. Meaning they were not coming into circulation, they were elsewhere lying very safely kept in the wraps of good silk laden cloth that they didn't lose their lifespan and it had to be sucked out. Otherwise, the number, the percentage of currency such notes which were being apparently used for transactions reached the level of 86 percent and many of which never got, many of such transactions never got into any system whatsoever. And in your GDP calculation, if you're looking at the value created in this country, circulation of money, the transactions, they were not even adequately representative because so many things were being transacted in hard currency. So it was important to make sure that the economy gets to being in some system. You go through the bank or you go through the system of making your bills and therefore the transactions could be evaluated. Otherwise, you're evaluating a minuscule of the economy. The rest of it was all generously lubricated by such currency. You had to do something of that kind. Each one of us, of course, can have a view on couldn't it have been done this way, that way. But it did, it did happen for, with a clear intention of pulling that money out, which was otherwise not getting into the system, and making sure that becomes the point from where the value of registering your transactions or getting it through some kind of a process really could happen. Get that money into the banks, explain that it is genuine money, tax paid money, you have no issue. Get that money into the banks does not mean that everything which came was fair money, clear money, tax paid money. So it, it had to happen. So if I said GST was something which we could do, the attempt to get the unaccounted money was one of the measures and a collateral, and I'm sure this word today will be quoted if I said this, it was a collateral benefit, but never mind, you may want to use it that way or whatever the digitization of Indian economy and the rapidity with which people have accepted digital payments. India has today become a leader in this. And there are today, wherever the Prime Minister is having a bilateral meeting with any of the country, there are countries which ask you, and I don't want to for a minute, neither me nor the audience, I would think, will do any condescending thought on, oh, it could be, you know, small economies. No. Major economies have also mentioned to the Prime Minister that we'd like to learn from your digitization experience. UPI, the uh, United pay Payment Interface that we have, Unified Payment Interface that we have, is become a brand for India. People are wondering how we achieved it. Days of paying cash is over, checks are becoming outdated, cards, plastic are not really the in thing anymore, QR codes probably are happening, and today the payment portal running people are also looking at beyond QR code. You could transact through your phone and finish, there is nothing more that you had to do in hard paper, hard currency, hard plastic cards. The rapidity with which fintech companies are coming up with solutions and India's 
one of the pioneers in this itself has changed the face of indian economy and people are looking at that as a product and a brand of india itself these are i would think major changes as much as industry and i can see quite a few captains of indian in, uh, indian industry here industry themselves are going through a clear churn a churn where no longer is it thought about in the old fashioned way you're looking at your business formula itself a davos like meeting could talk about industrial revolution 4.0 but what exactly is that we aren't we all of us beneficiaries of 4.0 already in some way isn't technology coming in that kind of a big way in many of our industry i'm sure sri parmudur can give us enough examples to say where robotics is coming in where big data is coming in our aadhar has led to so many other different things which are all looking at different ways of doing and running your business so it is not just one or the other but there are major changes major churning major reset of industry which is happening and government is actively engaged in this process your 5 trillion dollar is not going to be with old india it is also going to be because of a rapid change into new india and the new india is largely benefiting benefiting from different levels of technology and the absorption of technology for which the government is really facilitating rapidly is one of the ways in which you are speedily moving towards your destination it couldn't have been otherwise especially given the global situation today if indian industry if indian gdp for instance has more than 50% in fact touching 60 61% contribution of the service sector indian service sector we may like to believe and we will add and we certainly recognize the wide basket that we are talking about when we are talking about service sector it could be software it could be hardware i'd like to add on our traditional things like tourism culture wellness your medical tourism all this also to it and our doctors and our nurses and our engineers the stem contribution through technology and so on but what really contributed to that change is our mastery over technology some uh, some of course uh, cynics in india would say oh you are nowhere near china all right you are not hardware you don't have chip fabrication they could be all that and i agree no way near probably no way near china but the entire software revolution which contributes therefore 60% of our gdp is largely thanks to the private sector and probably some facilitation from the government wouldn't we agree on that and if that's the way india has grown purely because of its entrepreneurial skills that's the route we also think will speed up this this pathway to the this this travel to the destination of 5 trillion and to that we need to do everything that it takes to facilitate and that is why when i look at india the way in which we've been talking about modi's india about the three sutra that i said the nama sutra so the mantras in hindi they say sutra but in mantra the above prabhav and dabav that's clearly what governs the government's decision when we say reduce the equity of government to 51% or where possible to further is because we should make sure that these are enterprises which are going to run fairly efficiently and be a lean and mean machine a very critical decision you uh, may not link it directly to the economy is also to bring the cds the chief of defense staff the jointness which is required in the defense and uh, as all of you all know defense is one of the big bit budgetary items for indian budget making 
optimal utilization of resources in the defense, where a certain kind of a platform or a vector that they buy is possible to be used try service, Navy procures its own, Army procures its own, Air Force procures its own, and we all would want to say, no, 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 it is important, they should be empowered. But is there a way in which we could think in joint, uh, in, in the line of jointness, which is something which has been discussed post Kargil? That's been affected, and that certainly will have a contribution towards moving towards a five trillion, because not that we are going to save money out of it, but that will now make us understand that it's possible to produce things in India, even to supply to defense. The very idea of the corridor in a very industrially conscious Tamil Nadu, in an industrial belt that could al is already probably producing a lot of components, many of the parts which are going into some of the most sophisticated defense equipments. So that is the kind of India which can today produce many components for equipments which are getting produced by the original equipment manufacturers who are somewhere else. Why is it that they wouldn't want to come and manufacture here? We have the skills, we have the land, we have the uh, manpower who can do it. And we have the market too. And from here, export is not difficult. We are a rules-based economy. It's a predictable rules-based economy. We are not so opaque as China, let us say. So it's possible, and therefore that trajectory itself was laid with all this in mind by the Prime Minister. And in the same fashion, as I was talking about the IBC, is also the approach with which we are looking at companies' law. My first attempt and also an earnest attempt, which continues till today, is to decriminalize everything to do with the company's law or related laws. That very point about which Prime Minister keeps talking, and yesterday I was very uh, impressed. Again, uh, Nani Palkiwala Memorial Lecture in Mumbai, where the Tata Group's head Chandrasekhar has spoken, that government should trust people Government should trust its own citizens. And exactly, and that is why when we looked at companies' law, the number of sections which relate to something or the other leading to criminal approach and therefore penalties or even jail terms. I've gone through this now with a tooth comb decriminalizing companies law, ensuring that no other act of the government, whether it is IT, whether it is your uh, PMLA, we are making sure that that aspect will be addressed. We do not want a law which is going to treat every business house with suspicion. That's not the intent of this government at all. So that is one of the major things which I would like to do towards honestly making this path to the $5 trillion a lot more easy, a lot more matter of trust between the government and the businesses. And therefore, this energy also, which is gone now, guided by the above, Prabhav and the above rule, some of the companies which have been listed to be privatized, and for one or the other reason has not been really gaining traction. Whether it's Air India, whether it's the other companies which have been listed, the, the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs had cleared a list of companies saying, go ahead, privatizing. No, it didn't move at all. And they had their own reasons, not to say nobody worked. Every time it moved forward two steps, you had to take a step back. Now we are making sure that these are cabinet decisions which shall be honored and honored in the least possible time. Public sector banks, 
again, the interest that we took to make sure that they become scaled up, they become nimble banking institutions with so much to have to perform in financial inclusion, in making sure that every citizen of India is able to access a bank and access from where he is rather than search for six kilometers away from where he lives. We have professionalized the banks. We have given tenure security where they should be. And we had made sure that they would pick, pick people, domain experts from outside, and they shall not constantly only be getting promoted. Therefore, performance-linked pay aspects have also been brought in. So the public sector banks themselves are going through a lot of churn, not just the merger, but the cultural change we want them to have so that it becomes a lot more sensitive towards expanding their business. And not presume, all right, the government gives us equity every year, we can 